I've come to my senses and realized I should I should do a one day. Let's get a video out. Let's do a one day. One day! The bait's already made, I'm just kidding. This was sent to me. Metalhead Customs. Look at that tie. Look at all of what's been tied onto this bait. That thing flaps and everything. I'll show you action of this after I show you action of mine. It's not built yet. If I don't want the flappy, shiny thing on the back, I can put this dude off the back. And he gave me a spare blade with an eyeball on it and everything. Amazing, meticulous, detailed work. Do you call that a bucktail? Is this a bucktail spinner? I just consider everything like that an inline spinner. I just call it inline spinner stuff, but I got a couple of blades. Not as big as what he gave me, but we're gonna make our own in one day. I'm thinking some sort of fish body profile. Not much bigger than this, but some sort of fish body profile. There's gonna be lead in there coming off the bottom. A lot of lead. A spot on the back to tie everything to. Clear coat back over the feathers a little bit in the thread. Do I have hooks? I'm gonna put all of it on one of these seven eye. Kind of offset. It's got a little bit of an offset bend. Fish hook up on these real good. This is a good hook. Jig headed. Like the line tie is gonna come off the kind of the top-ish weight on the bottom and line. I'm not picturing it all too well, but let's just go. Let's do it. Piece of wood of choice, Tupelo. Always Tupelo. I'll probably cut a slot from the top to lay this hook in and then drill a hole from the bottom to put a ton of lead. Wire coming off of there with beads, spinner, bucktail tied off of there. I got about a half inch to put thread for my bucktail and feathers and stuff. Possibly more if I set that line tie further back. Hopefully that catches some water and does something. If it doesn't, that's fine too. There we go. I kind of made that belly even more pointy. I think that will look interesting. I'm just gonna cut that line where the hook goes right now. Establish the center line on the top with a cut. This blade's a bit thicker. I'm gonna do some thickening here. Piece of sandpaper, this is 150. Needs to be way thicker. Mm -mm -mm. Oh! 919. A lot of time. A lot of time to thicken this slot. That's what's taken the most amount of time so far. That hook fits great. It's a nice friction fit, doesn't fall out. So since I'm on a roll of doing everything before I shape out this bait, I'm gonna cut the lead hole, or drill the lead hole, and fill it up with lead and cover it with super glue and baking soda and smooth that off and then carve out the bait because this is small and small things that need a lot of weight tend to need that process done before you shape out the bait. Never drop guard, fellas. The lead pot's not hot. Plugged it in. Let's read comments. Load up the one day van and come to South Louisiana. I don't have a one day van and I never will. I feel like my audience from now on is going to pretend I have a one day van. I am not that weird. Can you give a tutorial on how you carve your gills? I should do that. Cause I've never gone into deep, deep therapeutic depth on how to carve gills. <laughs> deep depth. I need some help. I really hate sealing baits with super glue. What is the advantage of the water-based polyurethane? Does it dry fast? Can I go back and seal again if I have to fix a mistake? What brand do you use? I just cover stuff in super glue for one days because it's fast. There's other wood sealers. Type in on, go to Google and type in different wood sealers. Man, I'm so glad I found your channel. The baits you make are so cool. You made me want to get back into fishing in real life instead of just playing Fishing Planet. The comment was sadder than I thought it would be. Well, good. I'm glad that you're playing Fishing Planet less. The wood burning thing is a pyrography pen. I don't like wood burning. I often get the comment of, you should use a wood burner to 
make your scales on your baits because it'll just burn the wood away and you can make it really detailed. I've tried it before. It never looks, you gotta really, really know what you're doing. You probably need five years behind a wood burning pen to start making scales on a fish look as realistic as you can get with a very sharp knife. Dang it! I got excited about the idea of the one day van. You should start a second channel of your gardening and yard work. Call it something homesteading. People are oddly into watching people do normal housework. I think when I'm doing housework, I don't have to do anything extra. I can just do the housework. Like, I enjoy the yard work because there's no camera, you know? I can have a flat face and just be shoveling. You guys want to watch this? I was filling up garden beds yesterday. That's what I looked like. Let me know if you, I should start that second channel. These videos make me want to try bait making. That's the goal. So, dot dot, how do you get the super glue off your fingers after it kind of kills your top layer of skin by sticking to it? I can't stand that feeling and literally have to bite that crap off. I've met your kind before. Can't stand things on your skin. I'm not that kind. I don't care if things are on my skin. There's stuff on my skin right now. It's probably been there for a couple days and I have not taken the time to try to peel it or bite it off. I would recommend not biting things off your skin, no matter what. How I get super glue off, I take my fingers. See how I'm making like a pinching apparatus with my fingers? And I, get, I go to the super glue, pinch, and I peel. And usually I don't even throw that in the garbage. I'll just, I'll throw it on the shop floor. I think the lead's hot. That was nice. We got through some good questions there. Half inch hole, over a half inch down, probably five eighths of an inch down. Nice. That feels heavy. Usually you give it a second to cool down before you start putting baking soda on it because the baking soda can burn. All right, that's probably enough. Right there. Back to the disc sander. This is the thickness of wire we'll be using today. This is a 0 .051 inch diameter thickness wire. It's just gonna be line tie, clevis, blade, beads, and a tie off that goes onto the hook, so. Very fat. I'm thinking next that the, the eyeball needs to be figured out. I like those. Those are pretty special, but probably just a tad too big. 10 millimeters probably good. I do have half inch glass eyes, and boy, I could make one of those look pretty cool. I'm sorry, Dead Meat Customs. Sometimes I make my own eye, but usually I cannot get them to look as good as Dead Meat Customs. We need a half inch socket on this tiny thing. It's cutting stuff close, but it'll look good. I'm gonna have to protrude this eye socket a bit out of the bait. Well, whoopsie dupsie, I kind of walked it around on that socket. It got a, got a little oblonged. Stuff like this can be fixed even, I'll show you. If anything, it makes it look more natural. I'm just taking down these corners in strategic spots. Man, I sent this blade right into my thumb yesterday while working on this toucan. Bloody spot right there is from my thumb. So I'm carving extra careful today. You carve more careful when you do that the next day. By the way, I'm gonna be saying I have a new camera in two videos now. I didn't think I was gonna be making this video before the two cam. So it's gonna seem like I got a new camera twice, but I didn't. <laughs> but I got a new camera. It's gonna dome out slightly. This is gonna be pretty. How'd I get blood on this bait? We got blood on this bait too, the leaky bait maker. A nice, simple, one line. I think that'll complement the, the simplicity of this style bait nicely. You know what I mean? So, after an unnecessary amount of sanding, this is what I have. Yeah. Little Rosie's being pretty loud. Oh, oh, hi Finn. So as it sits on the hook, just like that, I think it's perfect. 
that I just added a bunch of super glue and accelerator. Still smoking, look at that. It's not going anywhere. Super glue baking soda. Now, as you do, just gonna dump super glue over the entire thing. You know, I am not weirdly enjoying this too much. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, almost glued a lot of surface area of my finger to the bait. When you do that, it's kind of an issue. Don't, don't glue your entire finger to the bait. I'm gonna have to recarve some things. Nasty, nasty crusties up towards the head, probably because I was applying the super glue the whole time like this and it was dripping down and touching the accelerator and the wood grain and let's get that off of there. Let's sand this down, probably back to 400 and get to painting. Starting with white. We're gonna put a very thin UV clear coat on this right now to keep the gill detail. Let's let this drip long time. Notice the crackle effect. That's because I put some polyurethane on it. And then I added acrylic paint too soon and it, it crackled over the polyurethane. I'm not gonna use that effect for anything, but just letting you know. So Fleet Farm had this and it's like scales that are colored and holographic and flashy and look at it. We're putting this on. I don't know, I don't even know if it's adhesive on the back. What in the world? What in the world? This is some sticky film, fellas. Bro. <laughs> How am I supposed to do this? Starting to question my competence here. What? Okay, there was, there was no film over any of that. Oh, it's translucent. Put it back, put it back. You're fine. You're fine, it was sticky on the back. Okay, I'm gonna put some different holographic just over the gills and then put that over the rest of the body. And then before I put that over the rest of the body or even this, I'm gonna paint. Okay, I have a process here. See, there's film over this one. I'm not crazy. You guys notice my knife with my logo and a fly on it? That's the official Marling Bates knife right there. Anyway. The sooner you remove excess, the, the more settled as a lure maker you will feel while doing this job. Get rid of your excess. Get your fingernail, get your fingernail in there, fellas. Important. <laughs> Critical step. Okay, I screwed up. I have to rip all this off and start again. The UV clear coat just came off. Why? I was interrupted by my compressor while asking God why. I don't feel like making this work. I put that polyurethane on there and it screwed everything up and I need to learn my lesson. I was a naughty bait maker. This one day was a fail. I can't redeem myself from that. It was like a bump, but it ripped it all off and there's no gill bump anymore. It's done. I will be right back with a bait very similar to that, but I will not have screwed it up and failed the one day. And it's no longer a one day. And I don't even want to try a one day tomorrow. I want to make this nice. I want to make it like this. And then go catch a tiger musky on it, you know? Here we are. New start, new bait, smaller eye. No longer a bluegill, it's a shad. Now it's a bloody no shad. I'm gonna be coming in from a pretty steep angle to try to just get some black on this side of, of the scales on the top. Pretty nifty. Now from the other direction with platinum, just kind of everywhere. When that mesh comes off, that's gonna look really good. Peel off this masking fluid now.
clean. We're gonna get some brush strokes on this bait. Do these gills up nice and shatty. A little bit of platinum texture. Yeah, probably just on the bottom. And then the rest is a hardcore chartreuse. Neon chartreuse. And that's gonna get a white backing. That is a bright eye. I like that. Nice, simple chartreuse. Duh. Platinum down there. Doesn't really show up that well, but. We're gonna do stuff with the clear coat on this bait. It's gonna seep in between that eyeball and the socket. It's gonna make a color. I have not decided what color, but it's gonna make one. That right there is all the shank we have to tie the bucktails and flappy goodness off the back of this husky blade bait. It's clear coat time. I think interference blue. Should I do violet or blue? We got white, silver, gold, blue, purple, red. Did I already say chartreuse? We got a lot of colors on this bait. All blue. That's usually how my thought process works. You guys see how blue that is over the black on the top? But you can still see the detail's great. It's not overpowering. Probably the first one. There isn't actually any green on this. Blue, silver, purple chartreuse. Are you sure? Like is that? Yeah. You want all the same length? Yeah, I want everything the same length and fade out at the same time. Try to put it in a straight line. That's pearl blue. We didn't have many blue feathers, so I just thought I'd shoot some blue on the top. Make it make sense. Beautiful. Ooh, I want to do some red too. Pearl red. Make this make sense. Just try to get the tips of the feathers from the bottom with pearl red, I think. Awesome, man. Chelsea tied that exactly how I wanted, or exactly how I requested. I wanted something a little smaller than what I already have. This isn't even big for a musky bait, but I will throw this and try to catch fish with this, but you know, a bass will eat this, anything will eat this. A walleye will eat this. Let's get this wire tied up. Make a bend, bend around that bend. Grab that bend and bend around that bend. So you, you got that, and then grab that, and bend this side up, and then grab that, and pinch that. And then you can wrap this around that. And there's the line tie. Time to twist. Clevis blade, beads, another tie off that goes directly to what we just made. Coming right up. All right, we got the same thing on the other side going. We're gonna tie that off, pinch it closed first. Put the bait on, then tie it off. Okay, that last one's just a smidget loose. No biggie, it's not gonna come undone. Everything's fine. Bait's done. I'm gonna get to fish with this today. I'm happy. Beautiful. Let's go see how it works. The red tips, man. Let's go find a spot down there. Here we are at the river, fellas. 
I don't know why. I feel like I'm gonna bump into a pike right here. See how it works? Oh man. It works exactly as you would expect. <laughs> no different. There is no action from the head shaped that way. It just stays still and the blade spins. That's all that happens. Good consistent spinner. Got one. Is this a smallie? Oh, dang it. My intuition was correct though. I really wish I hooked up on that fish. That is mag. Well, you know, that, that is the first time I've lost a bait in quite a while. I really don't feel all that bad about it. I wish I caught a fish, but what are you gonna do? I did get a bite. I saw a little bit of action, okay? What that seemed like to me was a brutal lesson in how difficult making a musky blade bait can be. Especially if you add wood and you try to make fancy paintings and clear coat stuff. And traditionally it's probably just a lead head, feather tails tied on, tie up your wire. I need to do that. There might be a making a musky blade bait chapter two. I could do chapter twos for everything. Anyway, definitely revisiting the inline spinner stuff. Musky guys call them blade baits. Conventional fishermen don't call them blade baits, they call them inline spinner baits. The fishing world is full of names. Anywho, I'm gonna leave this video here. No fish was caught, this was a complete fail. It was a fail before the lure was finished. This video will serve as proof that one days can be failed. You know, I gotta fail some sometimes. We'll be back and we'll see success with blade baits. But for now, on to the next bait. Fish hook up on these real good. This is a good hook. Is this a smallie? Oh.